Welcome to our How to Podcast series, Podcasting for Profit 5-Part Masterclass. The goal? To help you turn your passion for your podcast into a profitable venture. In this mini-series, we'll review the key strategies and tactics to boost your podcast's financial success. From building a strong foundation to future-proofing your income, we've got it all. So, whether you're a seasoned podcaster or just starting out, get ready to unlock the secrets to podcasting prosperity. Let's dive into Episode 3, Creating Valuable Content, The Key to Monetization. Well, welcome back to the How to Podcast series. It's Dave again. Glad to be with you. We are on the third episode of our five-episode mini-series. I hope you like mini-series. I hope you're picking up on what I'm doing here as well as a side note. Have you thought about this? The fact that I'm doing little mini-series, we did the apple seed series. Remember that? You can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you can't count the number of apples in a seed. I'm doing these little mini-series and baking them into my regular content. So you have the Daily Daves, you get the co-hosted episodes, you get my one-on-one episodes, just you and I, and then the little mini-series where I can go into a topic and go a little deeper and focus our attention. And what I like to do is try to release all the episodes together in order as well so that they stay grouped together in my feed for future. And then I give a uh, new artwork as well for the series. So there's something different that you can do in your podcast. I'm trying to model this for you that a little mini series might be nice where you can just talk about a topic, do a few episodes all around that topic, break it all down and go deep with your audience around a certain subject that matters to you in the moment. So that's why I'm doing this. So thank you for joining and being coming back again. Uh, we I'm recording this in November of 2023. We are kind of in the middle of the NAPOD POMO, National Podcast Post Month, and where we're releasing an episode a day, every day for the month of November. So this is episode 167. This will be part of the releases in November. So I have, after this, two more to record, and then everything else has already been preloaded, and this will take me all the way through November every single day. And one little side note, I went on a a uh, podcasting meetup group with a bunch of great podcasters in the UK, and I brought up the question in the group about if anybody was doing this, not Pod Pomo. And the idea that we're, again, releasing an episode every day for 30 days, so 30 episodes in a row. And as a side note, I also did it on Living the Next Chapter, which has another 30 episodes, so that's 60 episodes in one month. That's a lot of podcasting, by the way. And I asked the question, and before I was able to comment on my question, they kind of went around the room, and um, there was some angst in the room of people like, how dare they even expect us to do 30 episodes in a row? I do 25 a year. How am I going to do 30 in a month? Oh, and only people who don't work full time can have time to do this. And they're back and forth, they're back and forth. And I'm like, well, I just sat quietly and waited. Finally, it was my turn to kind of speak about my question to the group. And I did let them know that I have 60 episodes going out this month and that I do work full time. And uh, you could see them like, oh, so yeah. Anyway, so I just like being in front of a bunch of people I don't know, get to meet new podcasters, and uh, it's fun. So that's a little side note. If you're interested in meetups, meetup.com is free for you to sign up and be a part of. And then the host of the room has to pay for a subscription to host these meetups. And you can simply join in meetups around the world as a podcaster and meet a bunch of people you would never meet otherwise, and they get to meet you. So it's a great way to build relationships and build your community out and get in front of people who don't know who you are. It's awesome. So complete different tangent here. Let's get back to what we're talking about. Today we're looking at uh, something I don't hear a lot about when people talk about making money with your podcast. It's always about the, the action steps and the the one, two, threes, and the how-tos. 
Uh, the one thing is, I really think we need to focus on the key to, to monetizing your show. The absolute key is to create valuable content. You can have a podcast and you could talk about stuff that has no interest to your community and not be very successful. When we create valuable content, we show up for our audience. They fall in love with us. And then they're more apt to participate in community. Again, going back to our last episode where we talked about affiliate marketing and the fact that you need to build a solid base going all the way back to episode one, a solid base of community before you can even begin to generate income. Well, I really think the one thing that's missing from many of the gurus out there that talk about making money with your podcast is just the idea that we need to create truly valuable content on a regular basis so that our audience can trust us to follow along in community and build relationship with us. So there's a couple key points I want to kind of go over here as we look at creating valuable content as the key to monetization. One would be just the focus on your audience. Understanding your audience inside and out. And this is going to take a little bit of time. And in the beginning, we hear people talk about when you're just starting your show, that you have to kind of pick a target audience. So they talk about building a podcast for a fake avatar, a fake person. Every time I hear avatar, I think of the movie, James Cameron and a bunch of blue people running around. Uh, so that's kind of what I hear when I hear avatar. I, I like the idea of building a podcast that I want to listen to the podcast that I don't hear anybody else doing and something that entertains me as a host. I like to build the podcast that I like. And what I find that if you shift gears from f creating a podcast for a fake person and focus more on creating a podcast that you enjoy, that people who love your podcast will probably like you. They'll like you as a person. They'll like you as a host. They'll identify with you. They'll feel uh, a bond with you because they see the world in a similar fashion to the way you do. And your community will surround you by you just showing up being you. So I challenge the whole notion of creating a podcast for an avatar. And I would much rather build a podcast for me. Be selfish. This is probably the one time that you can be selfish by just creating a podcast that you're in love with. And if nobody listens, eh, hey, it's a podcast for you. All right? So enjoy. Build the podcast that you want. Don't chase some imaginary listener that you'll never meet and hope that you're talking to the right person. Just build the podcast that you like. It's so much easier. A lot less time. And you're not speaking to the wind. Okay, so... We need to focus in on our audience. We need to understand who they are, their interests, maybe if they have questions about what we talk about, and create content that really resonates with them so that they walk away from that going, wow, that was a great episode. That was a great interview. That was information I'm not getting anywhere else. I like the style of the show. I like the host. I like the feel of the podcast. I'm proud to be a listener of this show. The other thing we can do is just offer actionable insights. We provide value, actionable information that helps our audience in their personal or professional lives. Again, even if it's entertainment-based, you're making people laugh, you're meeting a need. We want to be able to help our audience to, to move forward with the content and make their life better, whatever that means. As we consistently improve our content quality, we refine our content by seeking feedback and staying up to date with what's going on in our area, our genre, our niche, our niche. We are always seeking to learn and add to what we know and grow as a host. And what I find is there's some podcasts out there where the host 
has been doing it for a long time. And they're very consistent. But as a host, it doesn't seem like they're growing personally. They're recycling the same thing they've said 20 times. They feel, I feel like I can, I can recite the next thing they're going to say because they're kind of a one trick pony where all they have is one trick and everybody is filtered through the same filter. It worked for the host at one point and now everybody has to follow their lead. And there's only one way to podcast and it's their way. And I just, I struggle with that. I think as hosts, you and I need to continually, continually grow, expand, read books, listen to audiobooks, listen to other podcasts, study, be a student of podcasting, and make sure that you're moving forward in your knowledge. And your audience is going to benefit as you grow. So don't be afraid to learn. It's that continuous improvement thing. We hear so much where we should be moving forward all the time. Some action steps around creating valuable content as the key to monetization would be to conduct audience research to understand your listeners' needs, preferences, and how you can serve them better. So part of this episode on our website, howtopodcast.ca, if you click on the link for this episode, number three in the series of five, there'll be a link for you to download a PDF with some questions to ask your audience, to help you create some research around your podcast and get to know them better. Because the more you know about your audience, the better you can serve them. Also, we need to plan out our content to address these needs that our audience have. And we need to provide some practical solutions and advice through our podcast. We want to be there. We're the expert in what we're talking about on our show. That's why we have a show. And we want to make sure that we're serving them with quality content, takeaways that they can apply and put into practice in their life. We need to invest in improving our content creational creation skills as well. Whether we look at courses or workshops or conferences, um, meetups, meetups are great and getting feedback from our audience. So one of the things I want to challenge you with as well, in addition to downloading the PDF for this episode and answering the questions and using it as a model, is I want you to think about how you can also earn a little bit of money for your show in a very simple way. Now, I have a link in the show notes to my T public uh, website. And what I do is I go to Canva and I create swag. I create shirts, hats, mugs. I create logos and I take my logos, download them from Canva, which is free. You have a free plan on Canva. I have the paid one because I, I live in Canva. <laughs> it's kind of where my mail goes now. Uh, it's my home. I love it. So I download these images that I create, I upload them to TeePublic, and then TeePublic creates all the swag for me around my shows, around quotes that I say often, or whatever comes across my mind, I go create some artwork for it and upload it. And what happens is, I'm creating artwork for TeePublic, really. I'm not really creating shirts. They take care of all that. They take care of the fulfillment when somebody orders it. They take care of the payment from the customer. They take care of shipping. I don't have boxes of mugs behind me, t-shirts and all that stuff. I don't have to buy them in ahead of time. And then I have to figure out how to ship them. I have to do all the work. No. I make a small commission from public when somebody buys my product. So the more items I can load up to my storefront on TeePublic, the better chance that somebody's going to buy something. So I would love if you would go to the link in the show notes and see some of the things that I'm working on there to give you an idea of what you can do. And then 
I would love for you to, to come up with your own T Public site and start creating your own swag. Again, if you build, if we go all the way back to the beginning, you're building community with your, your listeners, you're building a relationship with them, they're falling in love with your show, they want to tell others about your show, they're proud to be a listener of your podcast. They probably would wear some of your swag. They probably would gift it to somebody. Uh, the holiday season's coming up at the end of the year, and people are looking for great gift ideas. Why not share a gift about their favorite podcast? Why not? That's a great way to... That's something personal. That's something unique, something different, something you're not going to get at a big box store, and you can order ahead of time and have it shipped to your house in time for the holidays. So I'm encouraging you to go look at my Tee Public page. If something catches your eye, let me know. I would love, I'd love to see if you if you're interested to buy something from my site. Again, I'm going to make a small amount of money. For the most of the money that goes to Tee Public, but I will make a small little bit of money. And so I think you, as a podcaster, you have your buy me a coffee, which you've set up, right? Yes, because you're following along. Good. You have your buy me a coffee, you get a T public store where you just create swag from Canva, you create the designs and upload them to T public, they take care of the rest. Easy, right? Doesn't cost you anything. And you just make money every time you sell something. And then talk about it. Remember, you do not have because you do not ask. Tell your audience, hey everyone, click the link in the show notes, head over to my T public storefront. Take a look at what I'm designing around the podcast. And I would love if you could support the show by buying something from my site. And tell everybody. Put it out there. Share it often. And again, our listeners need to hear it more than once. And you need to be confident in your work, confident in your designs, confident in your show, and confident in your community. We want to be building this back and forth, where we put something in front of our audience, they respond, and then we put the next thing in front of the audience, they respond. We're doing all of this, especially, especially if you want to have a sponsor and down the road in the future. As your podcast grows and you meet the criteria that a sponsor has as a minimum number and minimum number of listeners and engagement, you want to be able to prove that to a sponsor. Again, if you were able to say to a sponsor, I set up a tea public store and out of my listening audience, I sell five items a month. That's great. That's amazing. Your audience loves what you do and they're supporting you. And there's something trackable there. So when you're selling to a sponsor in the future, you can say, my audience is really engaged. And when I promote something, they respond. So I would love to have you as a sponsor on my show. I promise to do great promotion for your item, your service, whatever. And I would love to be there for you and support your product. And I would love to have you sponsor my podcast. Again, you're building the foundation. You're building the community. You're building no like, and trust. You're doing all of the right things so that when you get to the point where you can have a sponsor, you're ready and so is your audience. Wouldn't it be amazing to get some big sponsorship deal and they take a chance on you and you put it in front of your audience and your audience eats it up because it is the best item, completely matches with your audience, fits with your content. You check all the boxes, tickety-boo as we say. <laughs> and your sponsor is like, whoa, podcaster, we just set up the link and we've already been hit already with hundreds of orders. This is amazing. Yeah, it took a long time to build and it took many times of asking and putting it in front of my audience, but they have responded. So your homework today, on top of the download, which you're going to print off, and you're going to fill in. And then you're going to leave me a voice message that you did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to, on my howtopodcast.ca website, you're going to hit the speak pipe. And you're going to tell me what you wrote down. You're going to give me some information. 
Let me know how you're doing as we go through the series. I need to hear from you. But as well, you're going to set up your Tee Public store, a link in the show notes, and a link to my storefront on Tee Public. And I want you to set that up. And then when you do, send me a link. I just might like to buy something. So I would love to see that. Okay. You need that Canva account. If you don't have that, you need to go sign up for the free Canva account. Sign up for the free T Public account. Again, do you notice the word free? Yeah, free. You can afford this. And if you're like, Dave, I'm not a superstar designer. Uh, you don't have to be. That's why Canva's there. Just look at what you get some ideas, your artwork for your podcast. You have artwork for your show when you uploaded it to your hosting site so that it appeared on Apple and Google and Spotify and Audible. So you already have artwork. Make that into some shirts. If you have any questions about how to do that, I would love to help you as well. Okay? How to podcast.ca. Looking forward to the next episode, and I'm really hoping that you're following along with this in order, following each of the steps, so that we can build income for you today, so that you can have some money to offset some of the costs around your podcast. And I want you to feel encouraged that your community is going to respond, because you built something great. You have a heart for your community. You're not out here to make a million bucks. You're here to serve a million people, right? And you're going to serve a million people by doing it one at a time. It's impossible to serve a million people at once. You're one person, but you can serve one million people by starting with one person, one listener, treating them like gold so they know they can trust you. And then... They want to support you. It's that whole reciprocity thing. I do something great for you. You want to do something great for me and vice versa. That's how I live my life. I want to be out there serving people. And I know that's what you want for your podcast as well. Okay. So how to podcast.ca. There's homework there. Print off the sheet for this episode and do your homework. And I trust and I know if you follow along in these steps that you will find your podcast is going to make money. You're going to feel encouraged. Your community is going to love you. And that you will realize that the key to monetization, it's not a big, huge audience. It's creating valuable content. How to podcast.ca. See you over there. Thanks. Well, that's a wrap for this episode of the Podcasting for Profit, a five-part masterclass. We hope you found today's insights valuable and are ready to take your podcast to the next level. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to join us for the next episode, where we'll delve into diversifying income streams beyond ads and sponsors. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave us a review to help others discover this podcast. If you have any questions or feedback, reach out to us on our website, howtopodcast.ca. If you have found value in this episode, please consider donating to the show via our Buy Me A Coffee link in the show notes or on our website, howtopodcast.ca. Keep podcasting.